Welcome! In this web tutorial we will teach you how to connect to and manage an Allied Telesis switch using a serial console cable and the web interface. For this tutorial I will be using a switch in the 8100 series family, but this tutorial should work on most Allied Telesis managed switches with a console port. This particular switch has 24 fast ethernet ports plus 2 gigabit uplinks. To manage the switch we'll use the serial console port on the right hand side of the switch. Our goal is to show you how easy it is to get a managed switch up and running with as minimal networking knowledge as possible. We will do this in four steps. First we will console into the switch using a serial connection. From there we will have access to the switch's command line and we can apply an IP address to the switch. Once the switch has an IP address, we can connect our computer and create an IP network. Once our computer and switch can talk to each other over the network, we can gain access to the switch's web interface, which is a graphical user interface, or GUI. Three things are usually required to gain access to the switch's console. You'll need the console cable that came with the switch, and unless your computer already has a serial port, you will also need a USB to serial adapter. Not all adapters are created equal, so reading reviews or asking around is usually a good idea. You will also need a software application called a terminal emulator in order to communicate over a serial connection. If you are using Windows XP or earlier, then you most likely have one installed called HyperTerminal. If you are using Windows Vista, Windows 7, or another operating system, you will probably need to find and download a terminal emulator. There are quite a few choices out there. The console port will either be on the front or back of the switch. It is typically an RJ45 interface but could also be a more traditional serial interface, like the DB9. While an RJ45 console interface may look like an Ethernet port, it will not function as one. It can only be used with the serial cable to gain access to the switch's command line interface to manage it. Plug the console cable into the switch's console port. Plug the other end into your computer or USB serial adapter. Next, we'll need to fire up a terminal emulator on your computer. I'm going to be using HyperTerminal, but if you're using a different terminal emulator, then uh, the step should be the same. HyperTerminal may ask if you want to make it the default telnet client. Just hit no. And it might also ask what area code you live in. This isn't necessary for what we're trying to accomplish, but it's necessary for HyperTerminal to launch, so go ahead and just type in an area code, hit OK, and then hit OK again. HyperTerminal should now load and take you to a new connection box. Here you can type in any name, then click OK. Under the connect to window, there should be a connect using drop down menu. If you're using a USB to serial adapter, there might only be one COM port listed. If there are multiple COM ports listed, you might have to try them all until you find one that works. Since I only have one COM port, COM3, I will click that. On the next window, you'll need to select 9600 under bits per second. Note your terminal emulator software might call it BOD. Verify that data bits are set to 8, parity is none, and stop bits are 1, and then change flow control to none. This will take us to a blinking cursor and if everything is set up correctly, we should have a serial connection established and hitting enter a couple times should provide us with a login. Alright, so now we have access to the command line interface. From here, we'll give the switch an IP address. There is a lot to learn here and don't worry too much about what each command does. We're interested in keeping things simple for now. From here, we'll need to log into the switch. The default username is manager, enter, and the default password is friend, f-r-i-e-n-d, enter. That should take us to the command line prompt. From here, we'll only need to type in four commands to configure an IP address on the switch. The first command is enable, enter. That should change the prompt slightly. The second command is config, space, t, enter. The prompt should now say config in it. 
We're now in configuration mode. From here, we'll type int space VLAN and the number 1. Enter. Note there is no space between VLAN and 1. If you mistype any of these commands, it should give you an error message and then go ahead and just type in the command again. From here we can give the IP address to the switch. The command is IP space address space the IP address you're going to give it. I'm going to configure my switch with 192.168.1.1. If you're unsure what IP address to give the switch, just use the same IP then end it with slash 24. Don't worry too much about what the slash 24 means just yet. At this point the switch has an IP address. It is important that the switch does not lose power or reboot until we've finished all the tasks or the IP address will have to be configured again. Now that we have an IP address on the switch we can connect a PC to the switch and create a small network so we can access its web interface. First, we'll connect an Ethernet cable from the PC's network card to any free Ethernet port on the switch. You should see the link LEDs light up on the switch. Now let's give an IP address to your computer. Depending on what operating system you have, this process may be slightly different for you. First, we'll bring up Control Panel. From here, we'll click on Network and Internet Connections. And then Network Connections should bring up a list of all of our network adapters. The one we are looking for is called Local Area Connection. Double click on it, then click Properties. In the white box, scroll down and look for something that says Internet Protocol TCP IP. Depending on the version of Windows, you might have more than one of these lines. Look for the one that says TCP IP version 4. Highlight it and click Properties. Click the little radio button next to Use the following IP address and type in IP address similar to the one we used on the switch but not exact. In this case we'll use 192.168.1.2. The subnet mask should be 255.255.255.0 which should populate automatically. Then go ahead and click OK and then close and then wait for a moment and close again. Since we have an IP address on both the switch and the PC they should be able to communicate and we should be able to access the web interface. To get access to the web interface we'll need to open up a web browser such as Internet Explorer. In the address bar type in 192.168.1.1 the same IP address we gave the switch. Now you should be able to log into the switch's web management using the same username and password we used before manager and friend. Now you have access to the web management of the switch. From here you can change the switch's configuration and it's a lot easier than using the CLI. However, Anytime you make a change to the configuration, you'll need to make sure to save all changes. Since we configured the IP address of the switch, we have yet to save the configuration. So we'll need to click Save in the upper right hand corner. Let's review how we got here. First, we connected a serial cable from the PC to the switch's console port. You may need to use a USB to serial adapter. Then, we launched a terminal emulator application such as HyperTerminal. The settings we used were 9600 bits per second or BOD, 8 data bits, no parity, 1 stop bit, and no flow control. This prompted us for a login. We typed in manager and friend, the default username and password, 
and then the commands you see on the screen, which gave the switch an IP address of 192.168.1.1. Then we set a similar IP address up on the computer, 192.168.1.2, then launched a web browser and pointed it to the address of 192.168.1.1. Before we end, here are some quick hints and tips. Not all networking devices use the same bits per second setting on the serial connection. While most use 9600, others may not. So if 9600 doesn't work, you may have to experiment. Remember, anytime you change the configuration of the switch, either using the CLI or the web GUI, you will need to save the configuration or risk losing the changes. Should you need to change the IP address of the switch using the web GUI, you will need to also change your computer's IP address before you can continue to manage the switch. Make sure you at least change the default username and password of the switch. When you're done making changes, make sure to set your computer's IP address back to obtain an IP address automatically and obtain DNS server addresses automatically, or it may not work next time you plug into your home or office network. The changes we've made should not affect your wireless connection. I hope you have found this tutorial helpful. For more information on our hands-on classroom-based training, please go to www.alliedtelesis.com training.